Oh, hey there. We're going to one of the fanciest restaurants in Disney World today. Obviously. Hey, ma'am fam. Today we're going to Monsieur Paul in Epcot. Well, if we're being honest, we went to Monsieur Paul a couple days ago at this point. But it is a very, very fancy signature experience, one of the ritziest in Walt Disney World. So it didn't feel right to bring in microphones and a camera and a whole setup and disturb other people who were having a very expensive meal. Yeah, and rather than VO the whole thing, we thought we would try something new and have you join us here as we walk you through the footage together. It's gonna be a lot of fun, hopefully. Again, new concept like Alan said, but uh, are you ready to go to France? I miss it. I'd like to go back. The correct answer was we. Oui. I feel like that's the same thing. We. Oui. We. Oui. <laughs> Sorry. First things first, going to Monsieur Paul was definitely a bucket list restaurant for me. In fact, it was the only restaurant outside of Victorian Alberts in all of Walt Disney World, Disney owned, that I had not been to. So now, just VNA is on the list. <sighs> One day. Some, somewhere over the rainbow. <laughs> Monsieur Paul is located on the second story of the France Pavilion. When it opened, it was called Bistro de Paris, and then it closed and reopened as Monsieur Paul a few years ago. And again, it is a very expensive meal. It is actually $195 per person, but you do get an eight course, very fancy, very exquisite. 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 Ex it's $195 per person, but you do get a very exquisite. Nope, try it again. Exquisite? Exquisite, with a T. No, exquisite. I know I'm say I know it's spelled with a T, but I think it's pronounced exquisite. Mm -mm. Exquisite. Ex exquisite. Yeah. <laughs> Learning so much today. Exquisite. 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 Z-U-H-T. Exquisite. 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 <laughs> First peachy king, and now exquisite. 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 How do you pronounce it, friends? The cost for Monsieur Paul is $195 per person, but you are gonna get a gourmet chef experience. It is gonna be delectable. Exquisite, some might say. Some might say that. Yeah. Yeah. So you could see why it was on the bucket list and not just an everyday occurrence restaurant. <laughs> Absolutely. And Monsieur Paul is named after Chef Paul Bocuse, who is one of the most famous chefs in France. He was chef of the century in 2011, what which- an honor. Literally, like the chef of the last century. Wow. I'm having trouble wrapping my mind around that. That's incredible. And he's held three Michelin stars for 53 years for his restaurant in Lyon, which, listen, talk about a bucket list series. Can we go? To France? Yeah. Yeah, do you know how much cheese and wine there is in France? It's like Not a, enough to satisfy. It's like all there is to eat there. But uh, Chef Paul Bocuse, he opened Chefs de France in 1982. It was an opening day restaurant there in Epcot. Um, and it was his first restaurant in the United States. And what's really cool is now his son owns the company that operates Monsieur Paul. So kind of a nice full circle moment. And one thing that's cool when you're in the restaurant is there are photos of Chef Paul and his team and opening the, the pavilion in Epcot and old pictures of Mickey. So that was kind of a fun little history thing that you can see in the restaurant. The restaurant itself features gastronomy, which is a very popular French style of cuisine and has evolved over the centuries. In fact, in 2010, it was added to the representative list of intangible cultural heritage of humanity for France. What do you think's on that list for the United States? Kentucky Fried Chicken? Big baseball? Ma Big Macs? Ooh, maybe. Was the Barbie invented here? You know what? For our instance and purposes, well, we're gonna look it up. First exquisite, and now the origin Where story was of Barbie. Barbie invented. By the way, these are California! Very... Barbie! Oh, Barbie's probably on the list. Yes, folks, these are very real conversations that happen. So, Barbie is on that list, too. I can't wait for that movie. It's gonna be so funny. It's gonna be great. I love seeing the Leo, okay. and Ryan Gosling, and Margot Robbie. Hi, Barbie. Hi, Barbie. Hi, Barbie. Hi, Barbie. Hi, Barbie. Hi, Barbie. Ugh. Hi, Ken. It's a stellar cast. It's gonna be great. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. At Monster Paul, speaking of Barbies, the, the average person who plays with Barbies would not be allowed, because it's a 10 and up restaurant. 
Wow, we got there. Yeah. Cheers. Thank you. It also has a dress code, meaning you are still in a park, but you are expected to look nice. So no swimsuits, flip flops, ripped jeans, athletic wear. You need to look like you are going to a restaurant that costs you $200 a person. <laughs> Which unfortunately means no tank tops. Mm. But that's okay. They we'll don't sacrifice. celebrate tank top season at all, Sir Paul. They don't celebrate tank top season there. But that's okay. I'm willing to sacrifice tank top season for delicious food. If you are going to Mall Sir Paul uh, and you are going to be in the park that day, I wore a very casual, comfortable dress that looked a little nicer than maybe what I'd wear on a regular day, but it was still acceptable for Mall Sir Paul. Got to get those slip shorts, mm -hmm. gentlemen, a polo or a button down. Yeah, I wore a button down, jeans, and a belt with a casual, actual, what I consider a slightly above average park shoe, so a, a Sperry. So Monsieur Paul, you'll check in. Again, it's on the back side of Chefs de France. It's near the ice cream shop. And then you'll go uh, upstairs to the restaurant. You'll do a little swirly staircase up and it's designed to look like French restaurants that you would find uh, nice restaurants in, in the actual country of France. But I think the best part of the ambiance of the restaurant is if you get a window seat, which we were lucky enough to do. With a beautiful view out onto World Showcase Lagoon overlooking Epcot, it was incredible. And I mean, we were there eating for the better part of what, four hours? It was a very long meal. <laughs> yeah, four, four and a half hours. And at the end of it, we were actually able to catch the fireworks show. Yeah, so it's really pretty view. Um, and, it, and it doesn't feel like you're in a theme park at all. It really feels like you've been transported to Europe and you're in this wonderful restaurant. So uh, you can always request a window seat. They can't guarantee it, but you can always ask. And now, we go through the courses. All eight of them. Plus a wine pairing. Yeah. Now, there are a few alcoholic beverages that come with your 195 per person cost. Of course, if you don't drink or you're not 21, they'll swap in something else. But if you do choose to imbibe, there are a few things that are included. Being fully transparent here, yeah, I don't think I realized um, how many would be included. Right. And how big the pours for the wine pairing would be. So. Let me tell you, the wine pairing per person is $65, and normally I would say, hmm, that feels like maybe in line with a, a more expensive meal, right? The number of pours you get, and like Molly mentioned, the size of the pours that you receive for every course, that $65 is well worth it, should you like to have a wine pairing throughout this meal. Maybe have an Uber ready. Course one, the amuse-bouche as well as one of the included cocktails with the prefix menu. You can choose from either Monsieur Paul's cocktail or a glass of champagne. I went for the glass of champagne. And I went for the Monsieur Paul cocktail. When in France, drink as the French do. And it was some of the best champagne I've ever had my entire life. It was crisp, it was bubbly, it wasn't super dry, but it also wasn't sweet. It was like, absolutely perfect. I took a picture of the bottle so that I can try and acquire it for a special occasion because it was great. And for the cocktail provided, it was Le Saint-Germain and it was champagne with a little bit of Saint-Germain liqueur and some Perret on top. Very, very light and crisp and refreshing and preparing the palate for what is to come, which is a lot of food. Now for the amuse-bouche, there were three individual components that made up your starting treats. The first was a Parmesan sun-dried tomato crostini. The second was a uh, snapper and bass fish cake with a cocktail sauce that's house made on the side. And lastly was a bit of chicken mousse mm -hmm. on a small bit of toast. I personally loved the Parmesan and sun-dried tomato crisp. It fell apart immediately, so you could tell it was made fresh and delicious. Um, it was super light. It had that kind of nuttiness from the Parmesan. So that was my favorite of the three. Oh, it's hard to pick a favorite. I. I'm surprisingly going to go with the fish cake that we had, the snapper and the bass. It didn't carry a lot of very fishy flavor. It was very light, a little bit, a little bit oceany in the back end, but not in like a very, very bad fishy way. And the tartar sauce was incredible. But I also want to talk about the chicken mousse. Mm. The chicken mousse and the toast was designed to showcase two wildly different textures. And as somebody who has never had chicken mousse before, was pleasantly surprised by the flavor profile. It kind of reminded me of a pate that you might get on a charcuterie board. You could really taste the herbs, like the parsley. It was very good as well. I actually put that the chicken mousse and the cheese thing to kind of together a little bit. Yeah, I don't know if you're supposed to do that, but I did. Made a mini amuse-bouche sandwich. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We're so fancy. Uh, and up next came your most important course. Bread, specifically cheese bread. There are three different kinds of breads you can choose from and you can get as much as you want. There was an olive bread, 
a cheese bread, and a freshly made baguette with butter. Oh my gosh, the simple deliciousness. I had multiple of the cheese breads. It was just delicious. I mean, it's house-made French bread. What, what else can I say? House-made butter. Next course, hors d'oeuvres. Hors d'oeuvres. I feel like we're adding some extra S's in there. Just trying to fancy it up. Oh, well, an extra S will do that. What did you get? So you get to choose one of the list. They had a lobster dish, escargot, and a saffron mussel soup. And I went for the escargot, believe it or not. And I went for the lobster salad, which was a bit of a step out for me. I'm not normally a lobster person, not having had it in a really, really great way before. Uh, I can't say that anymore. And what came with that was our first wine pairing. And it was a white wine that was incredibly dry, fruit forward, and we were told when paired with seafood brought out the subtle fruity sweetness of the wine and I like to think that I tasted that. Yeah, as not a normal white wine drinker, I very much enjoyed it. It was crisp and refreshing. And honestly, when pairing the wine with the lobster salad, first of all, lobster itself, again, only slightly briny, not a lot of fishy flavor. Uh, and when paired with the passion fruit vinaigrette, that pairing of like sweet fruitiness with some of the lightly salty, very tender meat of both the tail and claw of the lobster. I've not dreamt of seafood before, mm. but Monsieur Paul made me. I, again, went for the escargot, which if you're not familiar, is snails, which sounds less than appetizing, but it was delicious. Uh, the way it served is in a little cassoulet dish with some watercress and potato emulsion. It almost looked like a soup mm. of bright green, which again, maybe doesn't look like it's gonna be delicious, but I promise you it is. I was told by our wonderful server that you have to start from the bottom because that's where the escargot are. So you kind of scoop those up and then as you bring it up, you get that potato emulsion, mm -hmm. really garlicky. And then there was a tomato in there, so it brought in a little bit of natural sweetness and some citrus. The snails weren't overly salty. They are chewy though. Um, that's just the texture of snails. So if you're not gonna be into that, maybe skip this one. But if you wanna venture out a little bit, give it a whirl. Um, honestly, it was, it was almost an overwhelming amount of flavor, but in a good way. It was like garlicky, potato, citrus. It was very delicious. And next was the third course, or the fish course. The offerings there were a sea bass and a puff pastry, a snapper with potato scales over top, and seared scallops served with a maple pumpkin violet. We also got our second wine here. It was another white. This one was a Chardonnay from Burgundy. Um, it was oaky, dry. It had a little bit of a honey flavor to it as well, paired really nicely with the seafood. Okay, now what did you get? I went for the scallops, which was not what I thought I would end up getting, but our server recommended it. Uh, and these again were seared scallops and they had this maple pumpkin violet, which as a, as a pumpkin fan, you know, I was sold there. As a disclaimer, I don't personally love scallops. Uh, I think it's the texture for me. And I'm not going to say this changed my mind on scallops, um, but I know enough about cooking and seafood and scallops to know that they were prepared wonderfully. They had that perfect kind of char on the outside from when you pan sear them. There was a little bit of sweetness from that, the, from the pumpkin sauce. I think if you love scallops, you're in for a real treat, but being completely honest, this was not my favorite course. I picked up the snapper and it was delicious uh, with the potato scales over top. I was blown away by the seafood that I had in this experience. It was like a piece of art, the way those potatoes were on there. It looked like it actual gorgeous. small cut scales on top of the snapper. And it was light, flaky, absolutely just fell apart. And the scales of the potatoes were crispy and a great textural contrast and the sauce that it came with. It was a rosemary sauce with an orange gastrique and it was a little bit citrus bright with the herbaceousness of the rosemary on top of the light fish, my mouth is watering. Yeah, he, he ordered better this course for sure. I'm gonna dream about that snapper. Yeah, I'm, I'm already thinking about course four though. Oh, true. Course four, the palate cleanser. That made me feel like Princess Mia Thermopolis from Genovia. Between the courses to cleanse the palate. But you know when they had the little palate cleanser mm -hmm. sorbet? That's what this is, but with alcohol. <laughs> Brandy. Yeah. Now, a very unique brandy. It's a pear brandy with mm -hmm. a fun-shaped bottle. And we found out a fun fact about this, mm -hmm. and that is that when the pear is blossoming, prior to it being grown, they actually stick the bottle around the blossom and the pear is allowed to grow inside of it, and then the brandy is added. And that's wild. And they pour that on top of sorbet, and it's delicious. And then do as we say, not as we do. Don't You, you don't have to drink the brandy. We don't have to add that. So I wish good. they sold that as like a dessert you could get in France. If they sold that at the ice cream shop, 
Oh, that would be so dangerous. I'd go even more than I would do. Oh, that'd be so dangerous. What we're trying to say, it was an incredible palate cleanser. Deep pear flavor, incredibly refreshing. And then the brandy added a brightness and a little bit of a punch towards the end of that. That was the brandy to your mouth. Yep. You're with the visual aids. Yeah, no, nothing else to add. Yeah. And for the fifth course, they brought out, you guessed it, another glass of wine. This one was a red blend that was very jammy. It had some like deep strawberry flavors. This is my favorite one. Very, very, very fruit forward. But not sweet. No, not sweet at all. It was this, it was beautiful. So easy drinking. This I'd qualify as like a dangerous wine, a wine that you mm -hmm. find yourself drinking you don't know how much you've had. Yeah, and uh, it made sense they brought out a red because it was time for the meat course. Mm -hmm. Again, you got to choose one. There was a uh, chicken fricassee. Sorry, I only know not. that word from The Little Mermaid. In fricassee. Nailed it. There was chicken fricassee. Uh, it had a rice pilaf and veggies with some black truffle. Uh, there was a rack of lamb and there was a steak, which, spoiler alert, those are the two things we ordered. Mm -hmm. I went for the steak. Uh, it was a center cut beef tenderloin uh, with some mushrooms, mashed potatoes, and a Bordelais sauce. And y'all, y'all, when I say these were the best mashed potatoes I've ever had, they were the best mashed potatoes I've ever had at a Disney park, not cooked by Alan. They were so good. They were so buttery and so light and whipped and they were just perfection. Plus you had this mushroom sauce and this Bordelais sauce and then the steak. The steak was cooked so perfectly medium rare. It was so moist and it fell apart. And this course made me just want to chop Give him one of those. Oh. Yeah. He would get it. He's a chef. He knows. It was amazing. It was my favorite course. Well, You'll see my favorite course a little bit, but this was awesome. And I picked up the rack of lamb, which was cooked in a cocotte along with some curly green cabbage that was stuffed with mushrooms and chestnuts. Um, I decided when we sat down for this meal that I was going to try to explore new dishes that I had not had before or that I would not normally go for because if there was ever going to be a time to try it, this would be it. And normally I don't really order lamb, but this was absolutely phenomenal. Incredibly tender, deep, deep, rich flavor. And the cabbage on the side complemented it perfectly. It added a little bit of bitterness when you had a little bit of richness. The mushrooms gave it some earthy flavor as well. And the thyme on top added a little bit of an herby layer that, res that rounded out this dish. It was so very rich, but I, I, I was blown away. Next course, the real star of the show, <laughs> the cheese course. And you know what starts a great cheese course? Wine. Another glass of wine. <laughs> Oh. No, this one was my favorite because this I, was like the Pinot Noir. Yes, this was the Pinot Noir. It was a incredibly dry wine, very light, some light tobacco flavors on the back ends, which is an interesting juxtaposition. And it followed with a sort of plum flavor and a little bit of a strawberry finish. And it paired perfectly with all of the cheeses that we were given. Uh, there was a, a sharp cheese, kind of like a sharp cheddar. There was a blue, a camembert, a goat, and then a fig jam to go with it. And I mean, it, you're in France eating French cheese. It's perfection. It was all delicious. It went with the wine. You had the little croissants. They bring more bread. I, I'd be the happiest person in the world just eating cheese. And this was an awesome course following that delicious steak. And next up, dessert. And what better way to start out dessert than with a small cocktail, a little, a little glass full of Grand Marnier. Yeah, we just got poured a shot of liquor, essentially. Orange liqueur. Liqueur, I guess, but still, I mean, wasn't kidding about the amount that you can imbibe at this meal. And for desserts, you once again get to choose one. There was a chocolate almond cake served in a sphere. There was an apple tart. Um, or if you're feeling a little full at this point, you can do like a classic sundae, which had a meringue, vanilla ice cream, sorbet, some uh, chantilly cream, and a raspberry coulis. I went for the thin apple tart and it was so delicious. It was like beautiful in its design, very thin, kind of crispy on the outside, caramelized where that uh, apple was. And then it had a handmade almond cream on top. It was the perfect dessert to end such a beautiful and rich meal because it wasn't super heavy, but it was like a beautiful sweet note on the end. And I did the opposite of that. <laughs> <laughs> I went for the almond cake wrapped in a chocolate sphere. 
And the way that we melted the chocolate sphere, and by we, of course, I mean our delightful server, was by pouring rich chocolate sauce over the sphere to melt it. I think it was a chocolate cognac sauce, if I'm remembering correctly. You are correct. And yeah. it was decadence embodied. The richness of the chocolate, the chocolate cognac sauce over the almond cake that absorbed everything. It was a rich meal the whole way through. Mm -hmm. And it ended with this, which is, uh, at this point I started contemplating how I was going to exit the restaurant just from the sheer volume of things I had consumed, and, but I wouldn't change this for the world. It was so delightfully creamy. The chocolate was so high quality. The almond cake was a little bit of a bright note in between. Uh, and you can't forget the fact that we also got port wine. Right. Yeah, a dessert wine uh, to, to round out the tasting was poured. Just a little small guy. Uh, it wasn't super sweet, but it definitely was sweeter than the other wines we'd been drinking all night. And just kind of a nice final note. And uh, again, this was like a four and a half hour dining experience. Uh, so you're consuming all of this over a very long time. And the servers were great mm -hmm. uh, that even though when we were done, the park was actually closed. I never felt rushed. And they were like, no, please sit, enjoy the fireworks, enjoy the view with your last glass of wine. And it was lovely. It was stellar. And lastly, we were given a little to-go gift. Macarons. Freshly made macarons as a little thank you. Um, as our final course. Our final course. So I guess it's really nine courses if you count this. And we decided to enjoy these with you as our final course. I guess these are, the, this is the eighth course. Eight. This is the, the mini desserts. I guess it's nine if you count bread. We always count bread. Yeah. Which one did you get? Uh, it's orange and brown, so maybe like orange chocolate? My is green and pink. Green and pink, maybe Nailed it. maybe lime strawberry or watermelon or something. Cheers. Hmm. Mm -hmm. This is definitely orange chocolate, and it's delicious. This is lime, and I'm trying to figure out the fruit. The other fruit. Raspberry lime. <gasps> yes. Hmm. Okay, that's delicious. I used to think I didn't like macarons that much, but I think I just never had good macarons. These are fantastic. This is definitely orange chocolate and it is dainty and delicate and it's not overwhelming with the chocolate. I like the little citrus burst in there. Fantastic. And the raspberry lime, what an excellent pairing and combination there. Not very sweet, has some sour and some acidity from the lime and the raspberry adds its own beautiful sort of light, delicate flavors in the back end. Monsieur Paul was such an incredible experience. And I like that they give you this little take home. They also let us take home the little jams from our, our cheese um, board that we were given. They let us take home some bread. So they, I mean, the food is obviously amazing, but the service is also so, second to none. Yeah, it was just, it, it is one of the best meals I have had to date, period. Absolutely. I'm glad we could cross it off of the theme park bucket list. Uh, would you go back to Monster Paul? In a heartbeat. Uh, I would perhaps this time not do the wine pairing, but that's just because I didn't realize the volume of wine that you would be served. Mm -hmm. But she really liked the wine pairing. It was it was excellent, incredible wine. Don't get me wrong; it was incredible wine. Uh, I just it's would, just you get a lot. It's just a lot, and especially with what you're already served as a part of the meal. So I agree. I do think I would wait for the the menu to rotate. Restaurants like Monsieur Paul because they do serve less people and they are more intimate and more signature. They often will change the menu to be what's seasonal and fresh. And so I think I would go back when it's a different menu just to try something new. Obviously sure. at the price point of $195 plus tax and gratuity, plus anything extra like a wine pairing you get, this is not a casual restaurant. This is certainly a special occasion place. And I also think you need to be a foodie to enjoy this. Absolutely. Understand when you go there, you're paying for a level of quality in both the ingredients and the chefs who are there that you're not going to get many other places on Disney property. Or anywhere, I would say. I, I fully agree. So understand that that price tag comes with a little bit of weight behind it. And you need to understand that going in. I'm going to do some math here, but I'm not going to trust my brain to do it. 195 divided by eight. You're paying roughly $24 a course, not mm -hmm. including the bread course, of course, not including the wine, which obviously for some courses like the, the macarons, that's very expensive. But when you think about the cost of the steak yeah, a filet or, you know, some of the seafood, I don't actually think it's that outrageous of a price. 
um, but it again, it is definitely a foodie experience. It's definitely, I would say, an adult experience. I don't know many kids who are going to appreciate the menu and appreciate the ambiance and want to sit there for that long of a, of a menu, but it's, it was awesome. Well, that is a wrap on our experience at Mall Sir Paul. Definitely let us know down in the comments if you would venture there and uh, give this meal a try. Be sure to like the video, subscribe if you are new, and follow us on all of our socials. And if you want to join us in the conversation, feel free to join us on Discord. The links are down below. Oh, and this is a new style of video for us, so let us know if you like it and we wanted to get treated a little bit differently given the unique dining experience that we had at Monsieur Paul. And if you want to see other experiences like Monsieur Paul, again, if you like this style of video, let us know that too. Victoria and Alberts, one day, one day. Well, until next time, friends, I'm Molly. And I'm Alan. And it has been magical and very delicious. Oh. I would like some cheese. I want that snapper. Mm -hmm. Bye. Bye.